I survived for 100 hours as a solo on a 1000 player vanilla official Rust server. And this is how I did it. And we in. Welcome to a solo Rust adventure. And today, or should I say this week, is gonna be insane. Oh, and we even spawn next to a river. Free food, healing up to full, a beautiful start to wipe. Now, I was scouring the depths of YouTube when I stumbled across an insane looking base build. The only problem is, it's not for your everyday solo. If I was gonna make this work, I was gonna have to put in a lot of grinding. Which is why this isn't gonna be just a one day adventure, instead, I'm gonna be putting in 100 hours. That is, if I can survive that long. And so, let's begin. Okay, now if I'm going to complete this base design in this adventure, I know I'm going to have to have access to a lot of farm, which means I'm going to have to pick my base location really quite well. So let's have a quick look at this map. So immediately I see a mountain by launch site. So I'm going to drop a ping there and head in that direction, but uh, we'll see. As a solo with, now embarrassingly, more than 11,000 hours of Rust experience, over time I've learned the importance of base location for a successful wipe, which I'll explain down the line. But for now, I was heading across the map, as far from the primitive tier one lands and naked spawn points as I possibly could, and straight towards, what might surprise you, the tier three monuments. Collecting as much cloth and resources as I could along the way without wasting too much time, making sure to only take fights I knew that I would win. This guy doesn't have a bow. You might have some farm for me, Kamira. Okay. Nah, he's gone. I'm not chasing him. I just want to keep running. Okay, now I decided to go for a bow first this wipe, but only because I found 50 cloth right off the bat. Normally, I would craft bags straight away, but uh, that is going to be my next goal, because if I die right now, I will be back to the spawn beaches. And you know what? I'm actually going to kill the scientist. Might get lucky and get myself a pickaxe. That would be very nice. Oh. The script is going well so far. I just manifested that pickaxe into existence. You know what? I I mean, I could go for like a desert wipe. I do kind of... Oh, wait, what? This guy's a bow. What? That went through him. Oh, it's fine. This guy's not aware. Bro, what? <laughs> what is that guy's movement? Oh, my... <laughs> I was waiting for him to strafe. He just kept going in the same direction. Oh, very nice. Satchel charge, okay. Having already collected almost a full inventory of loot, I needed to build a base fast. And that was when I realized something. See, up till now, I had tunnel visioned for the snowy mountain by launch site. And what I hadn't noticed was this spot in the desert. Change of plan, change of plan. I don't need the snow this wipe. This seems like a really interesting location. I've got the military base for PvP and components. I have mining outpost if I need recycling. And I also even have the giant excavator, which I could potentially grub from some of the larger zergs on this server. After farming some nodes, I now had all I needed to put down a starter base. However, I still had a way to travel before reaching the desert. That was when I found this. Oh, come here, motherfucker. That's a horse. I need it. I don't just want it. I need it. That is big. Oh, let's go, baby. We'll be in the desert in no time. Damn, someone's already built a base. Help! Help with the food! Guy's still alive? What? Can this guy die? Bro, I'm gonna die to the spear. Okay, I'm... I'm nah, nah. No, okay, I give up. This guy's immortal. I <laughs> he just doesn't die. What? Please, can this guy die? I can't! <laughs> I don't understand. I don't understand. And after that slight interruption, I finally made it to the desert. Oh, having a horse is so helpful for a solo. Honestly, one of the best ways of getting a good start to wipe. I'm 
the question is, where do I build here? I mean, this seems quite flat. I could maybe build here. What's up top? Let, let me see what's at the very top of this mountain. Oh yeah, as I thought, there are so many nodes around here. This is perfect. Oh, I don't think this is quite flat enough, though. This is a really big base I'm building. I think it will be scuffed, but I do really like it up here, though. Hmm. Do I try? Do I try and fit this base up here? Oh! Fuck it, we're doing it. Oh, it's so not gonna work. I will be amazed if I can fit this in here. This is like a wide gap mega base. <laughs> Nah, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna try. I've got to try. And just like that, I had a secure base. For now. But let's talk about why I built where I did. See, it may seem like a meme at this point that I always look to build on a mountain, but I assure you, it's for good reason. In fact, being at the very tallest points of my entire area gives me, as a solo, more advantage than you might think. While yes, it puts me further from roads and monuments, what it does is create so much space for myself to live and farm without running into the chaos that comes with these busy servers. And it means every fight I take, I'll have the high ground and an advantage to win. Now, with a secure base down in what felt at the time like the perfect location, what's next? A lot of nodes around here. Oh, this is looking so good. Okay, since I have a metal pick, what I'm going to do is just grab all of them now. I think it's the best thing to do when you first get a start down. Just farm. Farm for a few minutes. Make sure that you uh, always have some resources to fall back on so that you're never running out of base with a rock and a torch. I think it's fair to say that nighttime in Rust can get pretty <laughs> frustrating. So, next time, instead of putting yourself through the pain of playing nighttime Rust, why not consider playing today's sponsor, Dragon City? Embark on an adventure filled with quests, ancient legends, and mythical creatures, building your very own empire by collecting, hatching, and evolving over a thousand unique dragons. Construct and customize your dream city to your liking and create that cozy vibe you may be after. Take on the global leaderboard and engage in epic PvP battles, climbing your way to the top. Join the active and engaged community of other players with over 450 million downloads and team up in alliances to unlock exclusive rewards. So, if this sounds like the perfect thing to fill your Rust nighttime, then make sure to download Dragon City today by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code, and get a special bundle with 15,000 food, 30,000 gold, and the exclusive Icing Dragon to help get you started. Thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. Now, where were we? We built a base, and next up, it's time to farm. See, as I mentioned, the base I'm attempting to build over this 100-hour adventure is pretty spectacular, so I was gonna need a lot of farm. And because of that, I never wanted to fall behind on resources, and so it was straight to work. Okay, this is some good momentum. I have a lot of farm in the tool cupboard. And while I have this horse, what I'm gonna do is head down to the road and see if I can get an early advantage on some components. Uh, because it seems like I'm not going to have a problem farming nodes this wipe, thanks to my mountain. But, uh, as people arrive down here, the scrap and components might be a little trickier. So if I can get ahead, I'll be in a really good spot. Oh, mace. Massive. Oh, I have missed the desert. It's been a long time. Obviously, there's a lot less cloth, and nodes tend to be rarer, but, uh... It always just feels so much more peaceful out here. That being said, give it some time. <laughs> this area will be filled with clans. Okay, that's a good first run. I'm gonna deposit quickly. Don't want to get greedy and die. Take my small wins when I can. Oh, I actually love this spot. I am so high up. This feels good, man. I have a really good feeling about this adventure. It's gonna be fucking sick. Keeping up the momentum early wipe is crucial for a solo. I wasn't going to waste too much time expanding the base, crafting furnaces. Instead, I wanted to take full advantage before the rest of the server moved in. Okay. 
This guy doesn't have a bow, but he has definitely been farming components. Oh my god! Okay. Almost just died to a spear to the head. This guy might bleed out though. One dead. Oh, that was clean. Oh, yeah. That's what we like to see. The desert is nice, because if you can catch people early enough, no one has any cloth. So everyone's running around with spears. So if you have a bow, you can uh, punish a lot of people. After another successful win, it was straight back to base. With players swarming, I wasn't getting greedy this early on in wipe. I would take everything I could. Look at that. Almost 200 scrap, full TC already. Beautiful. We were off to a fast start. As much as you can ever ask for as a solo. However, it was becoming increasingly clear that the 1,000 players on the server had started moving in. Oh, no, 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 no. That is five people. I'm not taking that fight. No, thank you. Oh, that guy's a bow as well. Yeah, I'm out. Oh, there's another guy over there as well. Yeah, it's starting to get busy. Mill base might be popular. I think that guy's just on his own. Can't really take the fight with the group of stuff there, though. I am really hoping that no big groups try and build up on my mountain. That could make things really tricky if they do. That's a train as well. Oh, there are so many people all of a sudden. Oh, dear. Oh wait, I'm, I'm just dead, aren't I? Yeah, that was so silly. I forgot my horse had no stamina. <laughs> oh man. Well, first death. Didn't really lose anything, but uh, still a shame. After a chaotic day, the first night time of wipe was approaching. And with my horse gone, it was finally time to take a step back, relax, and lay some foundations. Lovely. Just gonna chill up here for now, farm some wood, expand my base a little bit. I think it's important to uh, occasionally take your foot off the pedal. Can't be going at full speed the whole time, you'll burn out. Okay, time to build an airlock. Now, <laughs> I will say, don't copy me on this, I wouldn't wait this long before building one. But, uh,. I've known that I haven't needed one because I've not really spent any time in base. And so there's been no opportunity to get door camped. Um, since I have just been going at full speed. But uh, yeah, d don't do this like me. <laughs> and uh, I realize some of you guys are probably also thinking, Wiljam, I thought you were building an epic base. This is just the usual starter that you always build. And you would be correct. And uh, one of the reasons why I actually found this base so appealing is that despite how massive and complex it is, it's actually built from almost the exact same starter that I normally build anyway, uh, which is pretty cool. And it's also not a surprise because despite it being a meme, my starter is literally the most efficient base you could build. So just, just putting that out there. Don't flame me too much. Now that nighttime had hit, I got my furnaces crafted and metal smelting down. Personally, I very rarely roam at night. I appreciate the downtime and find it really important to keep me going through these long sessions. See, more than anything, Rust is actually a mental game, and it's important to remember that sometimes. And after waiting out the night, the sun finally rose on a new day. And naturally, it was back to work. A beautiful morning. Look at that view. You guys have to admit, I do always find the best locations. I do see a pig that I want to grab quickly. That'll give me the uh, low grade that I need for another furnace. Right, now I don't want to waste my cloth on crafting another bow. I'm actually just going to play to get a tier 1 and then I'll make a crossbow seeing as I already have rope. I think bows are actually quite unfairly expensive. Yeah, leather also gave me just enough for this bad boy. Boom, and now we can heal to full without using cloth, which again is all important stuff. And now with a second furnace melting down metal and full HP thanks to my bear rug, 
I can now use my new fragments to craft a metal door. The first thing I always do when I can afford it to avoid those early game molly raids that are all too common on these servers. Metal door down, my base was now safe from eco raids. My next objective was to get a workbench level 1. I had all the resources apart from more metal, so while it was smelting down in my furnaces, I headed out on a scouting mission to my nearest recycler, the mining outpost. Ooh, we're actually getting some good cloth. This is a really nice spot. I'm kind of in between the desert and the grass. So as well as the benefits of the desert, I also do get the benefits of the grassy biome. Okay, now I'm fully expecting this mining outpost to be packed with players, which is okay, because I plan on farming the military camp more, but uh, I am going to need this recycler at some point. Oh yeah, now players swarming it already. Pretty much what I thought, but that's okay though. After making it back to base once again, enough metal had now smelted that I could afford to craft the workbench. With my new tier 1, I immediately crafted a crossbow, and headed out after hearing some steps. In true Wildrum fashion, I forgot to hit record, so here's my stream. Try how busy this road is. Nice. I kept seeing him in the building plan. Was he about to build? I just... Always trust your gut. And I wasn't recording. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> At least I have the stream. Oh my god, that was so much loot. I cannot believe that delivery. Juicy. Well, uh, that was literally everything I need to expand my base again, and I have no room, so uh, I think it's time to expand. So, I'm not going to be giving away what base I'm building yet, you guys will have to work that out for yourselves. But to give you a little hint, it's built by a YouTuber who I've not actually covered before. He's fairly small, but has some really interesting base designs. Going by the name of Indominus, please make sure to go and check him out, drop him a sub, send him some love from me. I really hope it'll make his day. He definitely deserves it. Oh, I'm super excited to build this base, this wipe. It's so cool. I just hope that I can uh, get it all built because it is quite a big task. Starts out pretty simple though. And there we go. With my base quickly filling up with loot, I crafted up some storage. My next objective now was to race to the workbench level 2. The sooner I could get it, the sooner I could progress further on this epic base. However, a solo's road always comes with a few bumps. Oh, oh, no, I just, <laughs> I locked myself out of my base. I tried to shut the door on myself. That was, what was two of them? Okay, don't know what they're doing up here. Oh, it's three. At least. Ooh, Revies as well. Keen not to lose any momentum, I picked myself right back up and crafted another crossbow. It was time to head out and get that tier two workbench. I realize I should probably have a bag <laughs> inside my base by now. Oh yeah, these guys have been grinding. People have SARS already. I gotta speed up. Oh, these guys have been farming for sure. Have to get them. They've come from the desert. Ah, oh, I missed. Okay. Wait, did he just DC? He just DC'd. No way. Oh, no. And once. Oh, this guy can kill me, actually. I have no armor. Oh, no. Oh, what? That missed. I'm dead. I'm gonna bleed out. And again? What? Ah, how's he alive? Yeah, okay, that's scuffed. Two crossbow shots. I reckon I can come back and kill these guys, because that guy will still be DC'd. With another gut feeling that this duo would be worth the chase, I headed straight back with a bow. Oh, he put down a shelter. He's probably inside it, though. Maybe I can kill him on his way out? Just hope he doesn't see me here. I reckon he'll be low HP, he won't have healed up, for sure. Oh, so annoying, I got him, but he won't have anything, yeah, he would have just deposited. I couldn't quite catch him with the door open. Although, I could raid that. Wait, hang on, he was running towards the body. Has he not lose his teammate? Oh, I don't think he has. Oh! Garage door! Wait, that's insane. Wait, hang on, if he hasn't lose his teammate... That means he would have been full inventory, or else he would have done. 
which means that shelter's got to be loaded. I need to raid that right now. Putting everything else aside, I headed straight back to base and prepared all the tools I needed to raid the shelter, which luckily is surprisingly cheap. Oh, that garage door is so nice. Having one before a workbench level 2, that feels good. Okay, now a lot of people don't realize this, but the shelter is super cheap to raid, and I know that this one will be worth it. I know it. Okay, this should easily be enough. One sword, one machete, one cleaver. Oh, I see him down there, I think. He's there already. Shit, okay. I'm gonna have to kill him once then. Put him on another timer. This is him. Why do I feel like that was him? I think that was. Okay, well that means the guy I saw down there wasn't him. So now he definitely can't open the shelter. This should be free. Oh yeah, so worth. So uh, that's some really nice components. All for two swords, hell yeah. I had successfully evicted my new potential neighbors before they could get set up. Something to bear in mind is, while you may just be a solo, even outnumbered, there are often times you can catch groups off guard. All right, it is nighttime. I'm gonna do a little bit of fun. Now just a couple hundred scrap away from the workbench level 2, I decided to use the cover of darkness in an attempt to run the military base. It's a real misconception that as a solo you should always stick to the uh, smaller monuments like mining outposts and supermarket. I actually think they're just too chaotic that you kind of need numbers in order to run them a lot. Whereas the tier 3 monuments actually tend to have less frequent uh, players there like mill base, and I think it can actually work to a solo's advantage sometimes. If I can just get one or two quick runs at this mill base, maybe get some mill crates, I should be able to get enough. Oh my! Now oh, what the fuck? I was wrong. I was so wrong. <laughs> God damn it! As I was talking about how how mill base is quieter. Oh fuck me. I've got to get to the other side, but I want to steal the recycler loot. Okay, he's heard me. Fuck it. I'm going right for recycler. And we out. <laughs> oh, every fucking time, man. Love it. <laughs> he wants his scrap back. Oh, that's funny. Okay, we are genuinely flying. Um, got so much farm, a lot of components too. What I'm doing now, I'm smelting down sulfur because it's about time I start roaming with a revolver. Just a little bit of scrap away from the tier two now, but less than two hours into wipe, so going good. I had now began smelting down sulfur in preparation for crafting gunpowder. While that was cooking, I attempted another run to the military base. Maybe this time would be more successful. Okay, no scientists. I see a crate. This doesn't look like the biggest monument. It's actually proc gen, uh, which means every time this monument is a completely different layout, which is kind of cool. But, um, yeah, it seems like quite a small one. Should be at least one mill crate spawn, though, I think. Ah, oh, looks like someone might have loosed it. Maybe in here? Oh, there we go. Ooh, 24 high quality. Very nice. Hey, there we go. I was able to run mill base without running into anyone. And by the time I'd made it back, enough sulfur had smelted down that I could craft ammo for my revolver. Now armed with better weaponry, I could begin to roam more adventurously. That's a P2. Oh, I love the revolver. Ooh, Reba. Salvage Ice Pick too. Very nice. 
Got to be careful. He's roaming with P2 already. He's definitely got a team. He will not be on his own. Very nice, very nice. First tier 2 gun. Got to keep these furnaces loaded up. I'm going to need so much metal for this base. In order to never fall behind with such a big base to build ahead of me, I was constantly farming wood, nodes, at every opportunity I had. Wait, this bow is kind of clean. It's not my usual style, but I really like that actually. God damn. Sounds like a lot more groups with tier 2 guns now made it to mill base. Ooh. That guy's red hoodie actually. He looks like he's been farming the road. Also looks like he's on his own. I'm gonna go for him. Oh my. Oh, he has Revy. Now he's dead. <laughs> he should have pulled it out straight away. Oh! Tech trash as well. That's huge. I'm out. Where's the Revy? Where's the Revy? Ah, oh, I'm getting basted. Where is it? Come on! I, oh, nice. Got it. Come on, come on. I think I'm gonna make it. This is massive. Let's go. Huge! We got tech trash, which means as soon as I get the tier 2, I can get electric furnaces cooking, which are so important for building this base today. My small base was beginning to run out of room for storage, and hearing increasing numbers of tier 2 guns in the distance all around, I would need to expand pretty soon if I wanted to stay safe. But the workbench level 2 was close on the horizon. One more successful run, and I might just have it. Oh, I need to try the, uh, the new Alone in Tokyo skin. It's been a long time coming. Good to see my boy get it in the game. Where is it? Where is it? Wait, why do I want to have it? Oh, there we go. Oh, <laughs> wait, that actually looks fire. Holy shit. That might be my new favorite garage door. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh-oh. The boys are outside. I don't like that. Feeling pretty vulnerable in my uh, 2C4 base right now. Ooh. Sounds like they've moved off. Got into a fight though. That might be worth going for. After hearing a large number of steps outside my base, it spooked me enough into expanding my honeycomb. And while upgrading, an even bigger fight broke out right outside my base. And sometimes the chaos when two groups clash can be the perfect opportunity for a solo like myself. Okay, I gotta go, I gotta go. Wait, that's a really good body right there. I think that was the last guy. I'm not losing everything because I know there's going to be so much more. Oh. Big. Oh my god. Nah, no way I died to a bow. Bro! I just painted a circle around him, man. Oh, Thompson. Nah, I want that cloth. I need that cloth. We out, we out. Oh, that's perfect timing. Oh, <laughs> that was massive. I just swooped in, killed the last guy, and got everything. In messy fights like that, the difference between success and failure as a solo is efficient priority looting and getting out as fast as possible. Just a few extra seconds to grab that final body can often cost you the entire fight. And while I've no doubt there was more loot to be had, as a solo, I don't have the luxury to hang around. And after that win, it's fair to say I might have made a few enemies. And with my boxes overflowing, it was well overdue, time for me to expand.
As a general rule of thumb, I like to always have my base cost more rockets to raid than the value of the loot within. And right now, sitting at just 2c4 to tool cupboard, I had waited long enough. With some simple upgrades, I had doubled the raid cost of my base to 4c4 and quadrupled the storage in my core. Oh man, I actually have a huge amount of loot already. Now, the base that I'm building this wipe is fairly advanced and requires a lot of resources, and so you might not want to be building this in your next solo adventure. However, always make sure you have a strong solo base up your sleeve. If you're going into each wipe with the same expanded 2x1, don't be surprised when you consistently get raided. Okay, now on this third floor what we have is going to be our future bedroom. Now what I really like about this base is the core of it is just four triangles. Um, and then everything else is sort of expansion onto that. Um, and for me, the smaller the center footprint, the much stronger the base is always going to be because it's always going to be cheaper to honeycomb a smaller core. Gonna have to leave that as a metal window bars for now. Eventually that'll be glass window when I get the tier 2. Just 50 scrap away from a tier 2, it was very much on the horizon. Soon I would be needing lots of low grade for both med syringes and more importantly, Molotov raids. So I headed out on the hunt for Yogi. day and just 50 scrap off the workbench, it was back to the military base. You got a couple players in here. That was ready. I think this guy just had crossy though. Oh, Nate! <laughs> what a rat! One more. Got him. You know what? That is all the scrap I needed. I say we just get the fuck out of here. Let's go. Wait, I was wrong. <laughs> I need 15 more scrap. God damn it. Literally a handful of scrap away from the tier 2, I headed out once again except this time, made a rather unsettling discovery. Ooh. One dead. Is it just two? What am I even aiming at right now? Oh, it's three in there. Oh, that's not good. They're right between me and Milton. Yeah, nah, I don't want to fight that. So we got three new people right between me and uh, Milbase, sorry. That's not good. Oh shit, it's four! Damn. They just had a wide flank. Four of them. It seemed that a new group of at least four had moved into my area, and while not on my doorstep, 
They did lie right between myself and the military base. This might cause me some problems getting scrapped down the line. Playing solo, it's pretty much guaranteed that you're gonna be dying a lot, which from experience is not good for anyone's mental. For me personally, I find that every time I die, I like to head out and farm. It clears my head and allows a mental reset to help me keep going. It also prevents you falling into the trap of running out of base and dying on repeat until you're left with nothing. Something I'm sure every Rust player can relate to. All right, this time I'm getting the scrap. Always seeing trains go by on this track here. Needs to be careful that base over there. They have guns. Oh my gosh. Cool, he has a nasty head glitch. Alright, I think he's dead. <laughs> we got a tin alarm. Ooh, a missile launcher. Not sure I'm ever going to use it, but I'll take it. Ooh, laptop, nice. That is good, because I'm going to need a lot of turrets for this base. Oh, no. Please don't die to a bow. I'm not going to turn and fight this guy. I really don't need to. I just want to get the scrap home. And there we go. Easy. Tier 2 in, uh... I've just been, what, three hours? But actually... I've got so much other stuff as well that we are absolutely flying today. Look at those components. I mean, that's a tier two without ever recycling too. Hold on, before I before I craft the tier two, I want to I want to try something here. Uh, where can I put this? Like if I can if I can cover the top of my mountain with this, I can hear if anyone door camps me. Yeah, you can't really make that jump, so uh, well, at least you wouldn't be able to without me hearing. So if I cover off this entrance here, this could, this could actually work quite well. Can I cover, like, all the way across with that? Oh, you can't. It doesn't have that far reach. That's a shame. Put it there, though. <laughs> I love that. You actually wouldn't see that, to be fair, if you ran around from the top of the hill. That'll do. And now, wasting no more time, I had everything I needed to craft the workbench level 2. Ah, you know what this means. It is electricity time, baby. What I've been waiting for. Now, no matter how big the project you plan on building in your rust wipe might be, I cannot recommend enough investing some time into setting up your electricals. The electric furnace is one of the greatest additions to the game for any solo player out there. It's so important that often I prioritize learning it even ahead of the garage door. Not to mention, it's insanely easy to set up. Oh, I love that they made the medium battery able to fit in a half height uh, wall now. That means I can put the battery underneath the electric furnaces and it's beautiful. Okay, we got electric furnaces crafting. I'm literally using all of my high quality to do this, but uh, I think it's so important. So I'm just going to get three crafted up straight away. So we got a root combiner for the solar panels, which you don't even need, but I want to power up this battery so that I can run turrets on it eventually. So I'm going to use two solar panels straight away. Uh, but you could do this with one solar panel if you're just looking to power your furnaces. We'll take the output of the combiner into the battery. We'll then take the output of the battery into the E branch. And then we'll send 10 units of power from the E branch into a splitter which splits the power into three, and so I can power all three furnaces. Ah, now I can get this swapped with a glass window. Lovely. And then we'll get up on the roof and get these solar panels down, and that battery charging up. These solar panels are going to have to move, because obviously the space is going to expand a lot uh, upwards, but for now, I think it'll be fine. Get those solar panels into the combiner. Basically all that means is that uh, you're taking the energy from both the solar panels, you're combining them together, and then sending that into the battery. So effectively just doubling the, uh, the charge rate. Done. 
And as soon as you get the workbench level 2, along with electricals like the furnace, you should immediately craft up as many garage doors as you can afford. Alright, three garage doors are down. We are at least 10 rockets through doors now. And if I upgrade the quarter metal, we'll be 12 rockets through walls. And there is someone farming outside. Not on my mountain. Let's go get him. Oh, he just hurt me for sure. Oh, he almost got me. Oh, okay. Reba again. I think this guy was part of the four-man group. I need to be careful. They are not going to be happy with me now. But we are building up so much farm for this base. I'm going to be able to expand a lot of it today. More than I had hoped, actually. While often overlooked, something that can really help your wipes is building a bedroom as soon as you can. Crafting a bed and having a locker filled with kits can save you in countless fights. I always procrastinate getting a bedroom, but uh, recently, especially after playing with Alone in Tokyo, I have come to realize the importance of uh, having fresh re-kits. Third electric furnace down. Oh, I always find it so satisfying having uh, three furnaces in a window like this. I'm gonna upgrade the shoot to sheet metal, as at the moment it can be soft sided, which I do not like. You know what? I think I'm feeling a dark blue this time. We're not going with the light blue, we'll go, <laughs> we'll go with the dark blue. Alright, I've been playing for almost four hours now. I need a break. I'm gonna go get some food. Take some time and reset. So I'm just going to get ready with a kit in case I get raided, which I doubt I will. I'm at least 12 rockets to raid now. Ooh, I've actually also had an idea. Just to make sure I don't get uh, sneakily raided while I'm away, I'm going to set up some uh, anti-raid defense. So I need tech trash. I need two. So I need to get the seismic sensor and the alarm. Now this was added to the game quite recently and I haven't seen many people use it, but it's actually so helpful, um, to me especially. So by setting this simple circuit up, um, by having a seismic sensor linked to an alarm and linking that to my Rust Plus app on my phone, I can be alerted when a rocket is fired around my base. Um, which is so nice because it means I can be wherever and not have to worry about the risk of getting like quickly offlined if I'm you know, busy or sleeping or that sort of thing. And if you're aware enough, it basically means you can never be offline raided. What message do I want it to send to my phone? Getting raided, bozo. <laughs> That'll wake me up in the night. The anti-offline raid measures now taken, I was ready to take a short break. So, a couple of hours had passed, and I was reset and ready to get back on the grind. Thanks to the seismic sensor, I knew that I hadn't been raided. And thanks to setting up the electric furnaces, I had more than enough metal fragments now smelted down. I left my home, begun farming, and explored around my mountain, curious to see whether much had changed in the time I'd been gone. And almost immediately, I spotted a new neighbor had moved in. Let me go see if that's a wood door. It is, I might be able to raid. Now I have a tier 2. Plenty of low grade as well. Wait, this could be him actually. Poor guy. Okay, got some components. Not bad. I feel like that could have been this guy. He was heading back this way. Double wood door on the roof as well. I think I should hit that. 100%. While some of you solos out there may be more hesitant to raid, especially early wipe, allow me to introduce you to a solo's best friend, the Molotov. The perfect low-risk tool with often high reward. Not wanting to give my new neighbor time to craft up metal doors, I headed straight over in the dead of night to pay him a visit. 
Okay, I reckon four Molotovs and then a few incense shells for a locked tool cupboard should be enough. I don't know. He might have a metal door already, but uh, I just want to hit it quick and at night time. Might be able to catch him off guard. All right. Here we go. I'm using all of my low grade for this, but uh, I think it's worth it. inside. Dog, dog, motherfucker. Now please don't tell me he's found a shotgun trap. Please. Oh. Okay, we're good, we're good. Another wood door. He might have one more in there. But I think I'm good. Bro, what is going on with Molotovs? Why did that not break? My god, I brought six. Oh yeah. TC unlocked. Easy. Oh wow, yeah, he's loaded. Got wood, perfect. I'm gonna make a door and then seal myself in. Whenever you raid, always first thing, clear TC, lock TC, and secure yourself in. If they have no doors to shut, doesn't matter too much if he spawns in. So I'm not worried about breaking the bag just yet. I'm more worried about counters. I can just hold the bag like this for now. Someone's outside. Couple seconds. Boom. And we're safe. Just like that. And with the base now fully mine, I could take the time to destroy bags and check the loot. Oh, this is so worth. Jeez, this guy had farmed a lot. His furnaces were running too. He would have got a metal door down in seconds. Night vision? 2k sulfur? Oh my god. All of that for five or oh, for Five Molotovs, 250 low grade. He's gonna have uh, learned his lesson this time. Get that metal door down ASAP. That's why it's gotta be done. With more than a full inventory of loot to now transfer home, I decided to turn this into a second base. Securing it with a metal door, placing my own bag, I would leave the loot in there for now, wait for my area to cool down, and grab it later on. Now this base is actually in a really nice location right next to uh, the military base, so I'm just going to leave my kit in here for now because I might need it later on. I can use this as almost uh, an extra respawn with a kit if I ever fight down there. And I reckon uh, since it's already morning, I will wait until the next night to uh, transfer the loot. Nice uh, cheater reporting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not sure why he thinks I'm a cheater. Now that I had even more loot ready to be transferred into my base, it was clear I was going to need to expand. And this is where I may run into a problem. See, the base that I'm trying to build actually uses wide gaps. However, I built my base in a location with not exactly much space around it. And so the question remained, would I be able to fit in the footprint or was this base gonna be a lost cause? All right, here we go. Oh my God, I hope this fits. I'm too invested in this location. Okay, works on this side, but this was the easiest side. So one side down, three more to go. So this side is fine, all I need are just these two frames, so this side fits easily. Wait, can I even get this raised? Oh, I can! Oh, that's perfect. Okay, yeah, that's fantastic, that's all I needed on that side. Okay, we should be absolutely fine here, because again, just need a triangle here. Perfect. Alright, now for the ones I'm most worried about. These sides. So we're fine here, just need a triangle on this edge. 
not worried about that. But can I do it? Here and on the other side. Oh, let's hope so. That's going to be a door frame. This will be another bedroom. Let's just get these upgraded now. Get those removed. Alright, here we go. Please let me build this. It's going to be really close. Oh, wait. Maybe it's that. Oh my god. Oh, it's so good. It works. It's perfect. Holy shit. I nailed that. Okay, now just one more side. And if I get this side to work, then uh, this base is going to be looking pretty sick. Okay, please. So, one. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Oh, I think... Yeah, I can do it on that side. But the very last triangle... Oh, man. It's so close. I just can't place this last triangle. Ah, is there any other way I can do this? Wait, hold up. What if I just go triangles all the way around? Two, three. <gasps> oh, he fucking did it! Oh, that's, that's, that's beautiful. Oh my god. I couldn't have placed this base any more perfectly. <laughs> it literally just fits. Oh, that's insane. This is going to be like a fortress right on the top of the mountain. Oh, I'm so fucking excited to build this now. Now, one thing really cool about this base, which is one of the reasons why I was attracted to it, is it has these cool little grenade shoots that in the case that you are getting offline raided, uh, you can chuck a grenade through that little gap and it will fall down into your wide gap. Um, which I'll be able to explain more when I get to my roof, but that probably won't be until tomorrow at the very earliest. Um, yeah, got, got, got quite a few more hours of building before I get to the roof. Beautiful. And the other thing that I loved about this base, which I look for in every design I build now, is uh, split up rooms with plenty of space for multiple bedrooms. Um, just having lots of different rooms around the base means that you can spread loot around, especially if you're being online raided. You can move loot to different locations, and it can be really difficult for raiders to actually get their hands on your best loot. And also, just having multiple bedrooms like this um, means that you always have a chance to defend your base in an online. Um, so each of these squares on all three sides of the base is going to be its own bedroom with a locker kit. Eventually. We'll see if I can get that far. So each of these squares is going to have a single door and a garage door, which means there will, there will each be four rockets to raid. So just having these alone would make your base an extra 12 rockets to raid if they wanted to, uh, hit everything. Uh, but most of the time, they just won't raid the bedrooms, so you'll always have them. So, uh, yeah, really, really cool design by Indominus. Definitely recommend uh, checking him out. I am going to be changing a few things that, from my experience, I, I would like to see in the base, but I was really impressed with uh, the footprint of it. You just have to remember to actually attach each of these um, bedrooms to the main base so they don't decay. And what's really cool that you'll see later on is that this weird little build-out that I'm doing now actually perfectly extends onto the main base and creates a really cool uh, roof peak down, which I've not really seen before. All covered later. Thank you, buddy. I just realized I have one more triangle I have to place. I really hope I can fit these. Okay, that's two. 
And the last one. This is going to be the closest. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. As you guys can see, this is why I've needed to build up so much stone today. Because just this wide gap area alone is costing so much. But uh, I hope it will be worth it. insane. I have to go for this. I need to deposit my resources though. Nah, fuck it. I don't have time. I really want this guy. Oh, there he is. Backpack on too. Oh my god, this is going to be huge. Wait, no, he's, he's gone down. Shit, I thought he'd come up for more nodes. Oh, coming up on. Oh, let's go. I so want to see what's in this backpack. Oh my god. Oh. Holy shit. I need that high ball. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. I think he lives in that base. Yeah, he lives in that brick base. His teammate's coming. No, no, no. I'm not fucking with him. I'm out. I'm out. That brick base is new. Wood door on top. I might have to raid them. They have Jackie and backpack? Oh, this could be huge. Oh, what a win. What a win. That is insane. It seemed that I had a new raid target right on my doorstep. They had at least two members, but it appeared that I outgeared them heavily, giving me a solid chance to take them down while they're still primitive. Just want to finish this final side of the wide gap, and then I'm going to be crafting up molotovs. These guys are about to get hit. I'm just hoping they haven't got a metal door already, which they very much might have done because they live right next to mining outpost. Okay, I don't have any low grade, but I have animal fat, so I'm going to have to craft it all down. God, this is valuable time, though. I think they'll have a metal door by the time I get there. My hope is that because they're a duo, they'll spend their first frags on getting code locks. Which is what groups often do. And then they get metal doors later. So maybe I'm in with a chance. And with molotovs and incense shells crafting, I headed over blind. Not knowing what I would find. Still just a wood door on the roof. Don't see them. Could be out farming, mining. Peaches are mining, might be them. This could be perfect timing. Here we go. Come on. Come on, please have no metal doors. Oh, another wood door. Wait, they left the door open. TC unlocked. Door, key lock. Oh, these guys are going to be so confused when they come home. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Thanks, motherfuckers! My base now. That was definitely worth a good scrap in TC. A few components. Some GP too. I made my money back in uh, low grade as well. The raid was over, but they were still out roaming. It wasn't long before they came home. Wait, this is them for sure. <laughs> he got killed by the pig! No fucking way. Yep, just been farming at mining outposts. Oh, these guys are so sad. Wait, you had a P2? It was them, I heard. Oh, I think that's his teammate. <laughs> oh, the 
came home to no base. That's so good. Oh, another 60 scrap too. Loading up with a full inventory of loot from their base, and I headed home with my winnings. Can I jump this? Oh, I can. I've just found a new way up my mountain. Oh, and it takes me right to my base. Wait, that's perfect. I can't believe I hadn't figured that out before. Oh, we are looking so good. I still have all of the loot in the uh, the first base I raided to bring home as well. God damn. After another win, it was back to work completing my wide gaps. Oh, this is so satisfying. So what this will do is when I fill all of these frames with doors, they'll open up and I'll leave them open and they'll act as airlocks. And so this whole area will be to myself. Uh. Oh. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I hadn't considered the height of the foundation. Uh. <laughs> okay. Well, that's not going to work as a very good airlock. <laughs> Fuck. Will any of these actually work? Or am I just screwed? Oh, no. <laughs> Fuck, that's not good. What do I do? Maybe shotgun traps? Wait. No, I have it. I have it. I have the idea. My genius is sometimes frightening. <laughs> Let's fucking go. God, I'm good. Beautiful. And I'm pretty sure these are like three rockets to raid. Well, they're, they're, they're at least a full rocket, I think. Um, which is the same cost as the door, so that does the job. Just gotta remember these triangles on top. Also, I would just like to say, can I get some credit? I am finally upgrading with a miner's hat at night time. You guys proud of me? Not building in the dark like I normally do. I learned my lesson from the 10,000 comments I got about it. And so I deliberately crafted a miner's hat so I could keep you guys happy. And then these single doors also open out and create an airlock. Although, again, foundations are a bit too high. But I can just use siren lights again, I think. Another garage door in front. Beautiful. And then finally, we can remove the double door airlock and just have the garage door as our front door. Now that I have the wide gaps, I don't have to worry about people being right outside that drop down. Now, as I mentioned earlier, something often overlooked as a solo is setting up proper locker kits with your bedrooms. Wasting no time today, I got straight to it. Right, got bed crafting, got a locker crafting. Now, I have one Thompson from earlier, and I have plenty of P2s, so I'm just going to load up some kits now. Uh, and that way, if I ever lose a fight now, I can just immediately re-kit and get back out there. For now, I'm only going to fill one of these bedrooms because realistically, I don't need nine locker kits just yet. Hopefully, through time and through PvP, I'll just build up plenty of extra kits uh, and then I can fill the other rooms up. Uh, I guess I just place it horizontally like that. That'll do. stone barrier. That works perfectly. It's not as durable as the siren light, but you don't really need it on these internal airlocks. That's more for if you're getting online raided, so uh, yeah, stone barricades will do the job. I'm actually going to place stone barricades outside of the siren lights as well. That way from the outside you don't even see that there are siren lights, and so I mean people might try and break through them or something. Also gives them less visibility in. Oh, 
Lovely. With another step to my base now complete and the wide gaps fully secure, I was back to hunting for more raids. This teammate is absolutely booking it. Nice. Oh shit. I'm glad I killed this guy. Looks like these guys were about to try build. Not on my mountain. Oh, they were definitely going to look to build a Thompson? What? I think they'd been to a military base. God damn. Oh, this base is already looking majestic. And we're only just getting started as well. Not even halfway to it being finished. While out roaming, I had spotted a stone 2x1 with a wood door nearby. A perfect potential raid target. Crafting up mollies, I wasn't hoping for much, but you never quite know. Now, I'm pretty sure I saw this base a few hours ago and it has not changed, so I'm not massively hopeful, but uh, we shall see. Oh wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, that's uh, not quite worth. An unsuccessful raid, but with two Molotovs left, I continued my roam, looking for another potential target. I headed into the desert, an area which so far I hadn't done too much exploring in. And pretty quickly, I noticed this. Ooh. Is that a new base? It's got a metal door already. Oh, my base looks sick up there. It's already got a metal door, but it's got twig buildup on the outside, which suggests that they have a shelf for loot. Oh! What the fuck? He's just come back from somewhere. Oh! No way. No, the fucking horse is stuck. about to come out. He's a hundred percent. He's got a pump in there. I gotta be careful. He might have pumped slugs. Bro, he's not coming out. Fuck, I don't like this. I want to go. But if I get on that horse, he's just going to come out and pump me. Why is he not coming out? Is he waiting for a teammate? Maybe there's someone behind me? Oh, but fuck! That is so much damage! Let's fucking go! Doors open as well. Oh my god, I had a feeling he was waiting for a teammate. Oh, this is greedy, but I need to check. Oh my. No way. No way. Furnaces are full. Completely full. And they're timed. Oh, let's fucking go, dude. These guys are so loaded. I'm out. I'm so out. Holy. I cannot believe all of that loot. And that's not even their core. I need to get... I need to raid them. I have to raid these guys. They are going to have so much loot. Riding home with a full inventory of loot. And I now had a new target. Except this time, Molotovs wouldn't be enough. I was going to need the boom. But for that, I guess you'll have to wait until the next chapter. Just seven hours into this 100 hour Rust adventure, it's fair to say things were only just getting started. So make sure to subscribe, turn on your notifications, and I will see you all in the next one. Massive thanks again to Dragon City for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to use my QR code or the link in the description for your free rewards. With all that said, Wiljam we'll